Hi, today we're going to be talking about G-Fold, or Guidance for Fuel Optimal Large Diverts. This is a powered descent guidance algorithm developed at NASA's JPL by Betchett Achakmase and Lars Blackmore. Now, Betchett is a professor at the University of Washington conducting research on safe and precise powered descent guidance algorithms, amongst other things, and Lars is working at SpaceX as the senior principal Mars landing engineer. This algorithm solves the fuel optimal soft landing problem in real time using convex optimization. Now that's a lot to unpack. The fuel optimal soft landing problem is concerned with how to land rockets or spacecrafts propulsively on Earth or other planets in a way that minimizes fuel consumption. In the space industry, minimizing mass is everything, so you can see why minimizing fuel consumption would be important. Being able to solve this problem in real time, or as the rocket or spacecraft is descending, is important since it allows the algorithm to recompute trajectories if there are some boulders or any other obstructions near the landing site. In this video, we'll go over G-Fold as well as my implementation of it. I've also linked the original papers on lossless convexification and G-Fold in the description of this video. Now let's move on to the basics of convex optimization. This field is concerned with minimizing or maximizing a convex function over a convex set. Typically, we deal with minimization since maximizing is simply minimizing the negative of the objective function. That's a pretty unhelpful definition for those unfamiliar with the field, but in simple terms, a convex set is a set where you can choose any two points within the set, draw a line between them, and this line will always remain with the set, within the set. Put another way, any two points in the set have a clear line of sight with each other. A convex function is one where a line drawn between any two points on the function lies above the function. You can think of a convex function as a type of bowl. Like you have a parabola in R2, but in higher dimensions, you can think of it as like a, a paraboloid or any other sort of bowl with like a single minimum point. It seems like convex optimization would be very trivial since you could just find the minimum of these functions by inspection. However, in convex optimization, you typically work with functions that have hundreds or even thousands of input variables. So you can't even visualize these functions, let alone eyeball where the minimum is. Convex functions have a few nice properties. Firstly, a local minimum constitutes a global minimum. This is nice because if you find a local minimum, you know you found the optimal value for your problem, and most algorithms are good at finding local minima. Secondly, there exists a class of optimization solvers called interior point methods that can solve convex optimization problems very quickly. So if a rocket landing problem were convex, it could be solved very quickly and reliably in real time. In this version of the power descent guidance problem, the spacecraft is treated as a point mass without air resistance. This is a good model for the Mars landers, which this algorithm was intended for, since there's very little air resistance on Mars, since the Martian atmosphere is 1% the density of Earth's atmosphere. And at the speeds where this power descent guidance algorithm will take place, there is very little air resistance. Also, with the 8-engine jetpack which the Mars landers use, attitude dynamics and translational dynamics can be sufficiently decoupled so we can model this as a point mass. We also have a number of constraints, including dynamics constraints which ensure that the trajectories that are generated behave according to the laws of physics, a glide slope constraint, which ensures that the lander stays within a cone whose apex is at the landing site. And this constraint is in place to prevent the spacecraft from translating too close to the ground where there could be boulders or other obstacles that we don't want it to hit. There are also an upper and lower throttle bound on the propulsion system. Since the propulsion system has a maximum thrust it can generate, we can't exceed that. But also this system has a minimum thrust, so it can't generate thrust beneath a certain amount if we want it to maintain combustion stability. As posed, this problem is non-convex, mainly due to this lower thrust bound. If we simplify this problem into two degrees of freedom, we can visualize the set of feasible thrust vectors as two concentric circles, where the distance from the origin represents the throttle, or thrust magnitude, and the angle from the y-axis represents the direction of the thrust vector. In this set, we can see that any two points do not have a clear line of sight with each other because of this hole in the center. This set can be convexified by introducing a slack variable, gamma, which takes this inner circle and extrudes it in the out-of-plane direction to create this truncated cone that you can see on the right. This new set is now convex. It has also been proved that this convexification is lossless, meaning that a solution to this now convex problem guarantees a solution to the original non-convex problem. This allows us to just solve the convex problem. After some change of variables and temporal discretization, this problem can be fed into an interior point solver and will output the optimal trajectory of positions and velocities over time. 
Using this generated trajectory, as well as a feedback controller to help track this trajectory, we get a desired thrust vector that the engine should produce in order to help us track this fuel optimal trajectory. This diagram on the bottom explains the full guidance and control scheme, as well as this six DOF simulation on the right, which in real life would just be your dynamics, but in a computer simulation, you'd have to write this part. In the problem assumption, we model the spacecraft as a point mass, but we will need to account for the fact that the spacecraft is actually an extended body. For this, we have an attitude controller, which computes the desired moment on the vehicle needed to align it with the desired thrust vector. Now we have a desired force and a desired moment, and we need to figure out how to combine these two. Now we need to combine our desired thrust vector and desired moment into a throttle and a gimbal command, since the vehicle I have simulated has a single gimbaled engine similar to a landing Falcon 9 booster. The desired thrust and moment cannot be simultaneously satisfied by the single gimbaled engine. We can see that for a single gimbaled engine, we have three inputs, a throttle and an X and Y gimbal command, but we need it to satisfy a desired force, which has three components, and a desired moment, which also has three components. So we have three inputs to satisfy six constraints. And we see that that's an overdetermined system, so we won't be able to satisfy this at all moments in time. But if we assume that attitude dynamics occurs on a much faster time scale than translational dynamics, which is a fairly good assumption, we can come up with a good enough thrust allocation scheme. Firstly, the throttle command is the magnitude of the desired thrust vector, and then we can set our gimbal angles to achieve the desired moment. To test this guidance and control scheme, I wrote a six degree of freedom simulation in C++. The pseudocode for this simulation is shown on the slide. To write this simulation, I use the Eigen library for matrix and vector operations, as well as quaternion rotations. For the solving of the convex problem, I use the epigraph library, which allowed me to specify my constraints, and it then took these specifications, packed them into one matrix, and then fed it into the eco solver or the embedded conic solver, which then gave me the optimal trajectory. In this simulation, I also injected some disturbances, which is, can be seen in this process noise over here. When I injected these disturbances, I ran into some infeasibility issues with the trajectory generation as it approached near the ground. The way that I implemented the guidance and controls was by continuously re-optimizing the trajectory. So at each time step, this convex optimization problem on the left was solved to yield the um, optimal trajectory, as well as the set of thrust inputs that kept the vehicle on this trajectory. So what I did was I took this very first thrust vector and I called that my desired force. I actually didn't use a PID controller, which would have been much better because it would allow me to clean up some physics mismodeling or any other slop that was introduced by noise or anything else. It would just keep the vehicle on the trajectory and keep drive those errors to zero. But at the time, I didn't really know that. So I just took this first thrust vector, called it my desired thrust vector and ran the simulation. But sometimes I found that as the rocket got very close to the ground, the trajectory would cease to generate and my program would crash. It turns out what was happening was in this optimization problem, we can see that in the second to last line, R of T is equal to zero, R of capital T that is. So I'm telling the rocket that it has to land at the origin and only the origin or else you don't have a feasible trajectory gen generated. And this was pretty problematic because with these disturbances, sometimes the vehicle would be pushed off course and there would be no possible way that the vehicle could land at the origin. And because I'm binding that it has to land at the origin, no feasible trajectory was generated and my program would just fail. So I actually reformulated the problem. Instead of trying to minimize only fuel, I tried to simultaneously minimize the fuel consumption as well as the landing error. So I loosened up this boundary condition. So I allowed it to land some distance away from the origin. And you can see all of this in the red boxes on the right. So I allowed it to land some distance away from the origin with some velocity. And I wanna drive this error, this um, position error, this landing error to be as small as possible. And the scaling factor lambda, as you can see in the objective function is a kind of trade-off between minimizing fuel and minimizing your landing error. So after implementing this new problem, or this, um, this addition onto my old convex problem, the trajectory started to generate much more reliably and I was able to actually get results and my trajectories would not fail to converge as often. So on this slide, we can see some of the outputs of my simulation. On the left, we can see this blue line 
which represents the trajectory that the rocket takes as it's landing. And each of these red quivers represent the instantaneous thrust vector or the direction which the engine is pointing at at each moment in time. And obviously the longer the arrow is, the more thrust that is being applied. And these black lines are just projections onto the X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z planes, just to give you a better idea of what the trajectory looks like. And on the right, we can see these Monte Carlo landing locations. So what I did was I dispersed the initial conditions, so the initial positions and velocities um, and the initial altitudes, and I just let the program have a, have a go at it and wanted to see where the rocket would land. And as you can see, most of them land within this 10 meter radius. Uh, there's actually some landing locations here that are not pictured that landed a bit further than 10 meters, but the vast majority of them, over 90%, landed within this 10 meter radius, which is pretty good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.